I paid for a stripper's abortion. Nina was beautiful. She was biracial, black mother and Italian father, and she just glowed. Her life was a mess, and our friendship started because another stripper, Christine, R.I.P., who was my FWB and drug buddy at the time, used to drag me into Nina's strip club to score coke from the bartender. Nina was a great dancer, and even as pregnant as she was, still pulled in stacks of cash. She was an unmedicated rapidly cycling bipolar girl, and she spent her money, as soon as she made it, on street drugs and designer clothes and accessories. She was a knockout. I honestly had no desire for anything more than a friendship, something told me that more than that would be insanity. So friends we became. We just really enjoyed each other. One evening at a diner after her shift, I asked her about her pregnancy, and she let it all spill out. Daddy was a gangbanger who used to bounce at the club, and who was now in jail awaiting trial on serious felonies, facing decades of time. She already had two kids with her ex-husband. He had custody, because of her inability to remain compliant with her prescribed medication, and she knew she didn't need to have another baby. I suggested adoption, but she said she couldn't go through with giving away a baby she'd carried to term. She wanted to get an abortion, but believed she was too far along. She asked me to help her, and I said I would. The next day, I found a clinic in our state that did second trimester abortions and called them. Of course the first thing they told me was that she had to call them. Made sense, as I imagine plenty of guys strong arm women into terminating pregnancies. I called Nina and gave her the info, thinking she'd probably not follow through, but to my surprise, she did. They have to examine me first to make sure it's still legal. If it is, I have to go there two days in a row, once to have it done, and the second day for a checkup. It's $600 and I don't have it. Can you help me? Will you do this with me? She asked. I agreed. The next day, we drove an hour to the clinic. To our surprise there were no protesters outside, but once inside, I could feel Nina trembling beneath my arm. Eyes bored holes in me like sharp daggers. People mistaking my act of friendship as an easy way out, or an act of coercion. We walked silently to the front desk and checked in. Her visit confirmed she was 23 weeks, a week shy of the legal limit in our state. We paid the $600, and sat down to await her procedure. Soon she was called in, and emerged after an hour looking positively shattered. We left and took a room at a nice hotel near the clinic. She slept hard, I worked on my laptop and eventually went out for Chinese food, bringing back some soup for Nina. She ate it, then broke down crying, expressing sadness but also gratitude and relief. I also had mixed feelings of sadness and comfort at the opportunity to help a friend out of a bad circumstance. Soon, we slept. The next day's appointment was brief but positive. She was in good condition and was given a note for a week's sick leave. Not sure if strip clubs offered paid sick leave. But she said it was enough to hold her job there while she recuperated. I drove her to her apartment. We stopped at the diner for lunch, and she thanked me. Nobody in my life has ever been this nice to me without expecting something in return. She said, I'm your friend. This is how friendship is supposed to be. Someday I may be on the downside of up, and it'll be your chance to help me out. I replied. We remained friends for about two years, after which she moved to California with her then girlfriend, and predictably, we lost touch. It feels good to finally tell someone this story. 20 years and I never told anyone. I remain grateful for the chance, to have helped someone out of a real jam. Wherever she is, I hope she's doing well. I fathered a child for my high school sweetheart and her lesbian wife. Nobody but us three know. I'm a 40 year old male. My ex GF from high school has been married 4 years to her wife and they approached me about being a sperm donor. I had just broken up with my GF and really gave it some deep thought. I've been close to her since high school and we even thought about giving it another try about 5 years ago, but it didn't pan out. 
I broke up with my girlfriend at the time, and during that time, is when I went to my EXS house and we tried on two different occasions, to inseminate at home with an at home kit they had purchased. I had read, that it's illegal in some states, but we tried it anyway and well it worked. Her wife was pregnant with a boy and she gave birth a year ago today. He looks like me, and her wife obviously, but I guess it just feels different, now that I know he's out there. They have offered for me to see him in person. They said I'd be considered an uncle to the child, until he asks more about his father in the future. My family would be pissed, and so would a lot of people on both sides if they knew, but I just have a good feeling about it, and he seems to be very happy. I was an underage female companion for businessmen. There is a lot of history I could go into, but I don't really see the point. No, I do not and still do not have daddy issues. I love my father dearly. I was though a very lonely and hurt girl that was in an abusive relationship and had been sexually assaulted slash raped multiple times. The man I was with, when this first started he was, when I say abusive I mean one night I smiled at a male cashier too long, so he pinned me to the wall, and beat me, until I could not walk. I was in bed for days, and was barely conscious. One night when my boyfriend was working the night shift I decided to go online and find a chat room. I do not condone cheating, and it was wrong of me, but at the point I just wanted someone to value me. Even if it was some creep online for a few minutes. I spent a few hours chatting and sending pictures as you do. I continued to do this for a few weeks, until I meet a man. Let's call him Nick. Nick was a married businessman from Russia. He had two children one 5 and one my age at the time 14. We began to talk. I was always upfront about my age. He never seemed to mind always saying I was his little love his pure princess. We got to know each other very well, and developed a routine, that would be common with all the men I entertained. He would text me, when he was leaving work, so I could get ready and set up. He would go home lie to his wife about meetings and paperwork, and talk to his children briefly, before sitting down in his office chair a few doors down from his daughter, that was just as young as me. We would begin by talking about his day, truly I would just listen as he went on about idiots at work and due dates. Then he would want to hear about my day as well as pick out my clothing for tomorrow, and deciding if I had been a good enough of a girl to wear underwear. After this, he would let me know it was time for the show. Which I'm sure you know, was really me taking my clothes off, and showing him a good time. Depending on the night we would sit, and talk a while longer, him demanding I stay naked the rest of the hours we talked. On multiple occasions, I was sent tickets, to go and see him. Luckily, I was smart enough not to, as this companionship ended another started and that continued. I had, if I recall correctly, three in total. I don't mind sharing the other two men, and what happened with them or sharing more. It feels good to finally let the secret out. But, if no one is interested I would rather not waste the time. I have lied about having relationships for the past decade just to be socially accepted. Male 28 here, never had a girlfriend, never kissed anyone let alone have sex. I feel belittled seeing people 10 to 12 years younger than me living their sexual fantasies. I've been made fun of, both by guys and girls alike. Girls can't stop pitying at me, while guys can't stop teasing me. So, to get rid of all these haunting experiences, after college ended, I have given a random number to the relationships that I have had in my dreams. The results have been positive. People don't look at me like a loser anymore. I'm in grad school right now, and seeing everyone talk about their past relationships makes me angry at myself, I feel like punching my face. It's not a good feeling to know, that you've been lying to yourself for more than 7 years, there have been days, where it's just hard to focus on my studies, career, anything. I just feel like sitting and crying, but the tears just won't come out. Today is one such day. Thanks for reading. Have a good day everyone.
I love to pay random girls to perform my fetish. So basically I have a huge fetish for girls in crop tops. I don't know why, but I find women teasing their stomach so sexy. So I used to get cam girls to show off in the outfits for me, but it wasn't scratching my itch enough. So I decided to go to Instagram and ask random girls, college, if they would be willing to make vids showing off in crop tops for money. More women than you'd think are willing to do it, and some girls are willing to do it for cheaper than you might think. Honestly, I love it. They are gorgeous, and I love ducking off to their videos. The ones that respond seem to like showing off too. Some are better at teasing than others, but seeing how each girl decides to tease is part of the fun. But of course I feel some shame doing it. I'm always respectful to them, but each time I go to pay them, I do feel a tinge of remorse. So I don't know that's why I decided to post here. I want to become a drag queen, but I fear judgment. Okay so I've been starting to drag for about 2 months now, and I've always loved creating art and I've always wanted to have a career that I could be creative in as well. I only really dress up late at night, and when my family is usually in their rooms. My mom is very accepting, but my twin brother has always kinda been a little closed minded, and so whenever I hear him coming downstairs, or to my bedroom I feel the need to have to hide it from him. He definitely thinks I'm a freak, but to me it's an art form like any other, and I want to be able to dive deep into it. I'm also afraid of going out in public, dressed up like a drag queen, but I really wanna do so for Halloween. I honestly really love the art form, and I want to keep doing it no matter what, but right now I'm a baby bedroom queen, and I'm hoping that in a year I can look back and see how much I've improved. My mom wants me to go to college as well, because she wants something I can fall back on if I don't make drag a career, but for right now it's just a hobby, and I told her I'd have a job the entire time I did, unless of course I eventually have the option to make this a full time career. It just sucks that this world is all about money, and I've never wanted just any job that is all about the money. I've always wanted to do something outside of the box and unconventional, but I also fear failure. Thanks for reading I just really needed to vent. I'm gonna keep practicing I think I'm just constantly fearing the future, and I've been like that since childhood. Thank you for watching Radio M Confessions. Please like and subscribe.